Hey there everyone, Rambling Collector here, and welcome back to another comic review today. So for the subject of this video, this was actually a graphic novel that was sent to me by a friend and fellow YouTuber, Brevin's Flicks and Games, and he wanted me to give my honest thoughts on the graphic novel and comic series, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, done by Alan Moore, Kevin O'Neill, Ben Dema, Ajmalu, and Bill Oakley. So, honestly, up until he told me about this, I had never heard of this series, like, at all. So I feel like it's one of those rare comics that is only known to a select few, or is one of those that was unfortunately swept under the rug. As for myself, I'm not really sure where I would classify this in my own personal opinion. Because to me, I actually enjoyed this, but more for the aspects of figuring out where some of this classic characters were from. And to expand on that, the premise of this story is you have a whole menagerie of characters forming together into a secret government-run team, sort of like the British Avengers, but, as a twist, all of these characters are famous people from well-known British literature, including, of course, our main, main female character, Mina Harker, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Van Pelt, the Invisible Man, and Captain Nemo. All of whom actually work for a man and known as Mycroft Holmes, as if that weren't obvious enough, but for the mysterious benefactor known only as M, who was later revealed to be James Moriarty, also from Sherlock Holmes, having somehow survived against the great detective. And I actually really liked that. I liked that premise of bringing classic British literature characters together to either, either solve a case or figure it out using their own unique abilities. And I'm actually very curious to see what might happen next. I'm wondering if there's like a bigger omnibus edition of this somewhere, because this alone gave me a very satisfying taste. And one thing I will say is that I absolutely love the art style. Which, as you can see, has that more rougher, very stark, but also colorful exterior. That, honestly, I enjoy as a unique art style in and of itself. That sort of characteristic roughness of drawn in lines and very sharp colors from very very bright to very very dark but even during the darker moments for instance let me see if i can find a good one here right here the colors still seem muted yet also very bright right. and quite frankly i love that type of artistic work not to mention the premise of it alone is already very interesting to find out more because like I said before, this one only covers a very few issues, like at the most it covers the first story arc where they thwart James Moriarty after finding out, out he was playing them all. And this covers at least the first six issues, so I'm wondering if there's going to be more. Or if there is more, if there's a larger edition of it. And I will say this colorful cast of characters was very interesting, especially Jekyll and Hyde with Hyde himself being very well-spoken, and Jekyll even commenting that Hyde at one point used to be smaller than him in his human form, which that is a very terrifying prospect, especially since now Hyde is the equivalent of the Hulk of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Now, Mina's story is very interesting. It is stated that she divorced her husband, Jonathan Harker, and thus is now known by her maiden name of Wilhelmina Murray. So I'm very curious to find out more, but I'm willing to bet, because she wears a scarf around her neck, she still has the bite of Dracula within in her veins, and thus she is now half vampire, I would say? Either way, I'm very curious to find out more of what happens here, especially with Mina and her story. The Invisible Man, also known as Griffin, was also a very fun character. A shameless pervert who walks around and is willing to steal outfits and is more cutthroat. Sort of the rogue of a D&D &D party, in a way. And as for Van Pelt, at one point, when Mina finds him wandering around out in a foreign country, or out of his mind, doped up on opium, um, and looking the worst of aware. But over the course of the comic, he changes. He becomes smarter, he cleans himself up. And honestly, just that thought alone is very interesting. But especially the interests of Mycroft Holmes, as well as, of course, Moriarty being revealed to be alive and having survived. Especially with having read Moriarty the Patriot, which is a manga series that I definitely need to get back into. That was a very cool shout-out, I will admit that much. 
So I'm very interested to see what's going to happen further on in this comic series. And once again, to give you another glimpse of the artwork, once again, very well done, as you can plainly see here. It's very clean, very artistic, kind of like looking at a painting in a way. I will say some of the British terminology or deep English escaped me for a while, and this will have a very slow start, but as you continue, you, the pace does pick up quite a bit, and it's the intrigue that really draws you in the most. So what would I recommend this one? I would say, as of right now, a good 8 out of 10, as of right now. There were some moments that it felt very glacially slow, but the further you go, it, the p story does pick up. And there are some rough moments in the artwork at times, but that just adds to the charm. Altogether, Revan, if you're listening to this, thank you so much for f sending me this, and I'm very sorry that it's taken me this long to finally read this. Needless to say, though, I'm definitely eager to find out more. And if you guys like this video, feel free to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, or subscribe if you're interested for more. And let me know, does the series get better as you continue? Does it get more intrigue? Does it have more classic characters from British literature in it? I'm really curious to know, especially since this gave me a nice little taste. And quite frankly, I'm very excited to find out more, especially since, let's face it, I've got a lot of small and large graphic novels that I really need to burn through sometime, and hopefully that'll bring out more content for all of you, especially for those of you who follow this channel, who are major comic and manga lovers. I can promise you this much, there is more in store for the future. And once again, you guys, if you like this video, feel free to leave a like, comment your thoughts on it down below, or subscribe if you're interested for more. And if you have any suggestions for future reads, please let me know those as well. I'm always up for a challenge. Once again, this is Rambling Collector, signing off for now. Have a great day, fellow readers.